Greg, uh, the location is right off of Glendale on the 101. I understand that Dignity Health was looking for the right location for a number of years. Why did you pick this location and what kind of factors helped you make that decision? Well, that's correct. We've been looking into the West Valley for many years and it seemed like the time was right for us to, to take this opportunity. A lot of that was driven by, again, the fact that we did not have an acute care hospital presence in the West Valley. So uh, we really were looking into this direction. Uh, given the location that we've chosen, it's got great uh, access, whether it's from Glendale or Northern and of course off the 101, uh, but also high visibility. So again, for a family member or a potential uh, patient that's looking for the facility, being able to see it uh, from the highway is, is pretty key. Uh, but there were some demographics that went into it. Uh, the West Valley uh, in the past was obviously growing very quickly, even with the uh, onset of the recession. Now that we're coming out of it, it it's obviously slowed a little bit, but uh, appears to be picking up quite a bit. So we anticipate the demographics tell us that there's going to be a lot of families uh, within this area and, the, and our primary as well as our secondary service area. Uh, so this location uh, really s can serve as a central uh, point for a lot of the communities that are growing in the West Valley. Well, my head's off to you, despite the economic downturn that, that, that we've gone through, and, and I'll always be an eternal optimist, but uh, my head is off to you, you and St. Joseph's for still focusing on that forecast of need. Mm -hmm. And um, although construction on this facility began just recently, uh, you have been planning and committing resources to the West Valley for some time. Greg, can you tell us a little bit a little bit about that? This facility is a pretty critical investment for us. And as you mentioned, uh, even with the, the current economy and some of the changes that we're seeing with health care reform, it's still very important for us to continue to invest in our facilities and into our people as well. Uh, we're, we're not unlike any other business out there. We have to remain competitive. Uh, and and, and health care is a very competitive field, especially in this marketplace. So we have to continue to reinvest. Uh, but what we're trying to do is invest as smartly as we can. And again, so part of the design of this facility is looking to uh, be able to leverage the growth in the West Valley and be able to expand the campus as needed, uh, but also allows us to invest in our people as well. We think that's pretty important for us to going forward. What's really different about this is you mentioned in making an investment, mm -hmm. but the thing is when you make an investment, you have a return on your investment, ROI. Sure. But the uh, who's really utilizing that ROI are the citizens of Glendale. Mm -hmm. So I really want to thank you for that. And uh, it's interesting, the name St. Joseph's Westgate was chosen. Talk about that, how that name came about, because I'm very partial to sure. how you came about that. We went through a process. We obviously, internally, we had discussions, but we brought in outside consultants to be able to really uh, uh, seek out input from the community. Uh, how the uh, people in this area would respond to certain names. So we had about four or five choices uh, that we uh, thought about and then floated them out into some of these groups to get feedback. And uh, not surprisingly, St. Joseph's Westgate Medical Center was uh, by far uh, the most popular choice. I think part of it is Westgate gives you a geographical location so people are familiar with where that is located at. And then St. Joseph's has been such a part of this community for over 118 years, uh, and it stands for uh, not only our values, but I think the people in this community understand what uh, the commitment there is, as well as the values and our mission. And uh, so it was not surprising that it was the uh, favorite choice of the folks that, that uh, we asked, but the, I think what really surprised us was the, the gap uh, it was significantly higher, uh, and so it's hard to argue with that, uh, and uh, we like making decisions when we have factual data there, and, and so it was fair, fairly easy to go with that name. Well, that's good. Well, you know what? The next question I have to use a little ironic because uh, my wife and I just had this discussion um, uh, Thursday. If school is ending, and so uh, we, we have to fill out the, you know, the emergency uh, uh, forms, contact forms, and one of the questions on the form is, because uh, I have two beautiful daughters um, who are in, uh, uh, s going to be in fifth and seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions was, uh, which hospital you w would you like them to go to? Of course, their children, we said Phoenix Children's Hospital. Sure. Well, this lead, the perfect segue to the next question. Of course, there are a lot of families with small children in Glendale, just like myself. Right. Since Phoenix Children's Hospital is a partner of Dignity Health, what can you tell us about the pedi pediatric services that will be offered? Uh, will PCH have a 
uh, presence on the hospital campus? That's a great question. So the way that we're developing this campus is really in phases. So the first phase is what you're seeing today. It's approximately 62,000 square foot. Uh, we'll have a 24 bay ED uh, present there as well as 24 inpatient beds and then imaging as well as other supporting service associated with that. We're currently uh, in conversation with Phoenix Children's Hospital to identify how we can have them on a, on a, a presence on, on the campus, both from a, an emergency perspective as well as potentially an inpatient uh, perspective. So we're looking at phase one and identifying how we might be able to provide those services. Uh, what I'm most excited about is really as we get into phase two. Uh, in phase two, we're looking at additional construction where we would add uh, potentially inpatient beds, but also interventional services such as more ORs. Uh, but one of the key things that we would be adding would be an expansion of the ED. And so as I mentioned, we, the current construction under phase one has 24 ED bays. What we would be looking in phase two is basically to flip and expand it so that we would have an additional set of uh, almost a separate ED. And in that phase, you could have a completely separate pediatric ED, separate entrance, separate waiting room, separate patients, really managed and staffed by PCH physicians. Um, under phase one, we're trying to understand how best to provide those services.